Okay, so we have palpation now for the wrist and hand. So we start off with the radial and ulnar styloids. We start on the radial side, so we're going to come down on the radius here, following it down as we already have done for the elbow video, until we come to the distal end. And then you should feel, just at this point here, that it almost tips up and outwards. And that there is our radial styloid. Okay. For the ulnar styloid, easier if I show you on the other side, you can already see Niels just sticking out here on this um, dorsal surface. But to check it, don't just do this, oh, there it is. Follow from uh, where you know the ulna should be, down this medial edge. So don't forget it would be medial if we were in the anatomical position. So down this medial edge here, and follow it all the way down until you feel the styloid just around there. So this is the ulna styloid. Okay, for the radiocarpal joint line, we're looking at the joint line just in here, and to find it, we need to find the radial styloid, and also on this side, the ulna styloid. Once you find the two styloids, essentially what you have is a curve that is concave. So it runs in like that, from one to the other. Okay. Okay, next up is the scaphoid, so now we're looking for specific bones within the carpals. So the scaphoid is on the thumb side, um, and it's just off from the, uh, so it's on the proximal row from the distal radius. Now to find that, we need to find something called the anatomical snuff box, which is just in here, so I can just about see that in, in Neil. So if you just raise your thumb slightly and I just push down, you can see the two tendon sets in here. And that produces our anatomical snuff box. I'll just show you in me. You see this shadow point in here. You find that snuff box and then put your thumb into it. You need to palpate nice and firm in all of these to feel those bones. If you don't press hard enough, then all you're going to feel is the skin. Okay, so we find our anatomical snuff box and then we press into that point. Then we're on scaphoid. Okay. So we've got the thumb there, and then we also put our finger as if we're going to um, pincer our thumb and finger together. So the thumb is in there, the finger comes onto the anterior surface, and then that there is the scaphoid. And I can palpate the posterior and anterior surfaces of it. Next up, we're going to find the trapezium, which is then running on the next row of carpals down from the scaphoids, the distal row, we have two rows. So we're now on the distal row, the trapezium, which is then also at proximal to the, um, the first uh, metacarpal. So we're coming from the scaphoid to trapezium. So from this snuff box here, we're going to palpate in and then just run slightly distal, and then we drop into that trapezium. To check that we're on that, we can also just go a little bit further, and there I can feel um, the, the, the proximal end of the metacarpal. So once I know I've got to the proximal end of the metacarpal, I'm off trapezium, so I can then just drop back onto it. And that's trapezium just in there. Okay, next up is lunate. So lunate comes, uh, if we were running across the wrist from scaphoid, so it's on that proximal row, it comes across into the, essentially into the middle of the wrist from scaphoid. Scaphoid is quite big, yeah, it sort of comes round like this. So there is our scaphoid. Lunate is just the next bone long. You have to feel quite, it's quite difficult to feel this one, especially on the uh, palmar surface because you've got so many tendons running across here. Yes, yeah, so we've got our carpal tunnel also running in here. So that would be our lunate if we feel away from scaphoid. Also, on the opposite side, we can also again feel from scaphoid and along into lunate here. Lunate's reasonably small by comparison, so we should be able to, we should be again pincering, yeah. So we're either side of it and feeling that bone, and we can also just check if we just bring them into flexion. Lunate tends to just pop up a little bit, so then we can feel that bone on this posterior surface. Next up is pisiform. Okay, so now we're on the ulna side. So if we come across um, the joint here onto this ulna side, as we come down the anterior surface along the ulna, we come to what feels like another styloid. So we've got our 
on the styloid just here, look, and pisiform feels like another styloid on the anterior surface, on the palmar surface, but it's not. It's actually our pisiform. The pisiform is a sesamoid bone, so it's a floating bone just like your patella is, and sits on top of this proximal row. Okay, so what we've got here is pisiform, which we can pinch if we go um, medial and lateral, and we can hold it. Now, as long as they are completely relaxed in their forearm, we can actually move it medially and laterally. It glides medially and laterally when they're in a relaxed position. If you can't get them to relax, just get them to flex a little bit, starts to disappear, but also becomes a lot more mobile. You can see their nils moving a lot more. Okay, so that is our pisiform. Hook of hamate, we then just run distal from the pisiform and ever so slightly medial towards the mid midline of the forearm, sorry, which is actually technically lateral. Okay, so from there we just run down and outwards. And what you should feel is it's almost, you're trying to feel for a hook that's essentially sitting like that. So we have the body of hamate here and hamate has a hook that sits up. Okay, well obviously we have a, um, a tendon point running just through here. And you're feeling for this bony point that's sticking out on the top. And you're trying to essentially feel that. Over the top is also some musculature. And so you're feeling through muscle for a little bony prominence just underneath. So it's just there. Now to the patient, it can be a little bit uncomfortable if you press too hard. So do be careful of that. But that is the point you're trying to feel. Lastly, we have our radial and ulnar collateral um, carpal ligaments. So on the radial side, we're going to run down to the radial styloid on this lateral edge. Okay, till we come to the very, very last tip where it essentially falls into the joint space. And then in that joint space there is where the um, radial collateral carpal ligament then joins onto the carpals. So we just feel across here. Bear in mind you're feeling also across some of the thumb tendon so you know you you may think you are feeling a ligament more often than not you're actually feeling across tendons also so just bear that in mind we can obviously put it on a little bit of a stretch also and just feel across essentially just on that joint line there same for the ulnar side again come to the styloid but come to the most medial point and then you drop off the ulna into the joint space there we can put a little bit of stress on it. Um, so we're taking it into radial deviation now, and then we can just feel along where that ligament line is there. So it's from the ulnar styloid down onto the carpals. And that concludes the palpation for the wrist and hand.